No other being has such decision or such power. The angels are not given the power to think. And that was why God had problem with Satan the first time they started thinking. Satan thought and God had problem with him immediately. When they started thinking that he would be on the throne of God, he will be like God. The reasoning alone made God to pursue him out of heaven. Because the angels were not permitted to think. They were spiritual so beings that do everything that God said they should do. So we, human beings, are the only being that had the power to say no or yes to any decision. And that's why I go against the philosophy of fatalism that says that what's going to be going to be. I said, no, from the scripture, when I finish, they will be able to realize that you have created power to play in your destiny. Don't fold your heart and think that what's going to be going to be. I have bad news for you. If you belong to fatalism, philosophy, I have bad news for you that listen. Nothing happens until something happens to something. Praise God. Nothing happens until something happens to something. Even Newton, in his scientific analysis, I said Newton, God close to it, but because of regenerated man, there was a way he then got out of it. Newton said in the first law of Newton's law of motion that an object assume the state of rest or if it's in emotion it's assume the same position until an external force is applied good to some certain extent that say yes certain extent that say no because when a, an object is there I, I want to say when you want to apply it to human nature no you don't need an external object you need an internal object why because all that pertains to godliness has been given unto us God has given us all the death to go forth and become champions in our destinies. So don't sit down and wait and start telling me that what's going to be going to be. That is God knows. I ain't not going to believe you, man. We need to understand this very early. A lot of people have wasted their lives waiting for what's going to be going to be. Believing that one day it's going to be alright. Yes, it's going to be alright one day, but we have to walk. To make it to your right. You don't sit down and cross your legs and wait that one day it's going to be alright. No, that is not the will of God. When I finish this message, you can be able to understand what I'm saying. Praise God. Because when you stop up, your problem will cease to sit down. And when you sit down, your problem will stand up. The day you wake up and say, Listen, I'm taking my destiny by storm. I must achieve a particular thing and you now go heartedly, spiritual body, with the power of imagination, go forth unto that in prayer with God. That thing must surely come to pass. Because that's the human nature and being created that God has put in man to be a procreator. God is a creator. He now made man to become a procreator. That, that, that ingredient is in man to reproduce. That's why God said in the book of Genesis chapter 2. He said, go forth onto the earth. He said, replenish. To replenish is to bring back what has been used. Replenish. The cars we see here, the houses we see, all the air conditioners and the speakers we are seeing around, all of them. We are man-made. They were not God-made. Why? Those men refuse to sit down and wait until what's going to be going to be. They, they task their brain and now come up with millions of cells of brain. Now they produce what they are seeing around here. I see you becoming a champion in your generation in the name of Jesus. You will not be wasted in your generation in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Something very striking, and I say, lifetime is a generational opportunity. Don't waste it. Praise God. The life we are living is very precious. If you know scientifically how you came to be on earth, you understand that millions of other people had to die before you be on earth. So the life you are living is generational opportunity. And the moment you misuse it, it's not only God that will punish such a person. Even those generations that let you 
you go to represent them, you still have a question to answer. Maybe what we're going to help now, we're going to argue that because I have some strong reason for doing that. No, it's not in the Bible, but I got it from the spiritual realm. Praise God. You are not only answerable to God, you are answerable to millions of brothers and sisters that let you go, that you will go and fertilize the egg of your mom. You are not only answerable to God. Those ones that let you go will still ask you, why were you on earth? Why do you waste our chance? If you know you are not serious, why didn't you give somebody else opportunity? So the life we are living now, a lot of people died for you to live, apart from Christ. And I'm saying, I make bold to say it, that you are not only answerable to Christ or God, you are answerable to those that left and gave up and died for you to be the one that will be on earth. You will not fail your generation in Jesus' name. Yeah. I said somebody, I'm not talking to everybody, I said somebody will not fail this for a generation in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Listen, we are here to make it part. We are not here to join the numbers of the people that on earth to make up the census. How many people are in Nigeria? 200 million people. They say now it's 230 million, as they say. Now you start asking yourself, how many of those 240 million are good human beings? You see, don't just count. Some people are just good for census. They count their heads. How many heads? We are talking about how many heads. What 
a waste. The oldest man on earth had just three chapters, three verses in the Bible, three verses to analyze 969 years of being on earth. Three verses, three only, three verses. 25 to 27 was the only verse in the Bible that talked about the chronology, the history of the oldest man of earth that lived 969 years. What a waste. What a waste. Our father, Methuselah, was a disgrace. It was a total disappointment. At the end of 187 years, he was still a bachelor, enjoying himself. Praise God. Methuselah was, at the age of 187 years, was when he married. So from one year to 187, Methuselah was just enjoying himself on earth, roaming the street. He was the father of all. He wasted. How many people are up to 187 years today? This man wasted 187 years. No family. I don't know whether the village people were the one that had to deal with him and they forced him to marry. So the boy will marry. The man has to marry at the age of 187 years. Somebody said, God forbid. And now when they got married, the only history he had was that he came back to Lamech. He never gave back to sons and daughters. And he died. Somebody said, Waste. After God looked at the years he gave to me, to sell a nice nine years, God said, I'm not going to waste this guy time again. The man wants to buy a particular place that will other 10 people will have lived in that place or 12 people. Divided by what? 969. Now, the man wants to buy that space for 969 years without doing anything on death. The only thing he achieved was he lived, he began to live, he died. We said yes. It was not coming to say that God said, listen, nobody can stay like this again. God now reduced this. They saw Lamech, God reduced his own and said, Lamech, no one stay like your father. Your father no good. Well. From that, he got the time, God said, listen, now 90 years. 100 years is okay. But, but you said I lived the life of almost 10 people. And this man did nothing with that. Wisdom. We need to learn from a lot of what God said that Bible should be an example for us to learn to be good. Something that happened to people who good things and bad things that happen. We need to learn. Our our father made sure look good well. Praise God. I don't, I don't, I don't envy him. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Now we are talking about wasted years that we should avoid it. We should stand up. What will make us to live and not have wasted years is that we shall stand up at any point in time and tackle our challenges that we are just waiting and procrastinating about it. That challenge will not change. Until you change your mind to change it. That challenge cannot change until you change your mind. The mind will change, the mind that it will be born well one day. You change your mind. And when you change your mind, then it will change. If you are doubting it, I will show you what happened to Brother Jabez. You would have said that Jabez was so honorable. And everybody knew him, but he was not reflecting on reality. In the book of First Chronicles, chapter four, verse nine, and Jabez was more honourable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, "Because I have been in his soul." And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, "Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thou might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil." That it might be not revealed, and God granted him that which he requested. Praise God. Everybody, we are calling the best. Honorable, honorable, honorable. The best was answered honorable, but there was nothing honorable in him. Until one day he said, No, 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 no. I must call upon God to bring this honorability to pass. And they cried. And God was waiting for him to cry. God knew that this Jabez 
needed his name to reflect on him, but God never did it. God was expecting Jabez to understand and change his mind that what's going to be, going to be, is not his ideology. And Jabez stood up and cried and God said, Now nah, we will go. I will make you honorable like your name. Now, what God said, God came up to him and did exactly what Jabez asked. Today you are waking up. I'm not just waking up, you are taking over. You are taking and prevailing over every challenge in your life. In the name of Jesus. It's not about dreaming, it's not about trying to take it. There must be action in all your desires. When there's no action, dream can die as if you never even thought to pass. Vision can die. There must be this action. There must be action. You know, when we talk about Abraham, there are things that the Holy Spirit, you know, revealed to me. Give things in the scripture. And one of them was that this promise on Abraham would have not happened to Abraham. The God had intention of fulfilling it in the life of the father of Abraham. But the father was so complacent and was not proactive. It was the father, first of all, that conceived the vision of going to Canaan. It was not Abraham. God intended to give the descendants now Canaan. But it was not Abraham that God intended to give it. It was the father of Abraham that would have been put into Canaan before the vision would come. But because the man was a man that with any time he had challenge, he would not, he would not go ahead. You see, he's not, let me tell you. If I start something and it's moving and there's no challenge, I will stop such a thing. I'm saying it's a better time. I will just know that devil is not interested in this thing because God also is not involved. Anything that comes from God must be there. There must be warfare. Because devil must kick against it. For some people that if they are going, they will just, if they hit any wrong, if they jump any challenge, they will leave that thing and say, well, I don't try. You never try, you Then your neighbor will never try. You will get it right. Praise God. I know that after today, those, those vision you will give that say you don't try, you are going back to them. And you will see yourself, imagine as champions, when you go back to sort all those aspirations, dreams, and ideas, you will see yourself moving forward to the glory of God in the name of Jesus. So that's like what? Abraham was not supposed to be there. But because the father was complacent, Look at the word of God in the book of Genesis chapter 11. I read verse 31 to 32 because of time. And Terah took Abraham, his son, and Lot, the son of Adam, his son's son, and Sarah, his, his daughter-in-law, his son Abraham's wife, and they went forth with them from all of the Chinese to go into the land of Canaan. And they came on to her and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in her. Praise God. He was going to Canaan because the spirit has been in her at the most of Canaan. As he was going to Canaan, he comes to a place called her, which is supposed to be a place of transit. He pitched his tent. He made it a, a, a permanent residence. He started living there. He forgot about where he was going. He died in Haran instead of going to Canaan. And when God met Abraham, he told him, he said, Listen, I'm going to give you the land of Canaan because your daddy was not able to accomplish it. I'm going to give it to you. You will not finish on transit. Amen. I'm talking to somebody, one person. You will not finish on transit. Amen. You must get to your destination in the name of Jesus.
I said, we need your father's stop. We be your starting point. Because no end where your father can. You are going farther and farther and farther and farther in life. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. You see, most of us are waiting for signs to have to come. Praise God. How many people are waiting for signs to happen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's natural to wait for signs to happen. But that's not the best way. The best way is that uh, you should look back to know other signs have started following you when you start walking. Praise God. You know, that is the scripture. The scripture did not say that signs will come to us. No. It says signs shall follow us. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with no tongues. Praise God. So God does not want us to cross leg and wait for when sign will come. God wants us to act on his word and be looking back as we are acting and see signs following. Until we begin to act on God's word, signs cannot be. That's why I see some people say, brother, what's happening now? I saw the last 10 years and I, I, you said you are about getting married. Are you, are you married? He said, no. Why? He said, I'm, 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 I'm still believing God. Praise God. Sister, why haven't you started your business? You say you're going to start your business. Yes. What's worrying you? I'm still believing God. Praise God. And God is believing this brother and sister that you should make move so you can be able to accomplish. It is your move that commands signs. You don't see that and see signs. It is when you move that you see signs. Signs don't go ahead of you. Signs comes behind you as you are making move. In line with God's word. So we need to change our perspective and stop bombarding God with some prayers that are not in line with God's word. Science follow. Science don't go ahead. Praise the Lord. I want to understand the principle of prayer. The principle of prayer is go to the book of James. The word of God says, Is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any Mary, let it say, Sam. Now, I'm not talking about the prayer. Now, you go to, I'm in James chapter 5. I've read uh, 13. Is any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any Mary, let it say, Sam. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the, the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall grant the praise more. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Praise God. These are the words. You see, it's the prayer of faith that heals the sick. It's the prayer of faith that gives us results. Anytime we have need and we talk to God. But look at how this prayer of faith comes to pass. I want to show you something. So make sure that will help you in your Christian life. On how this prayer of faith works. Four verse chapter five. I will read verse fourteen. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His way, He heareth us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of Him. Praise God. He says that if the confidence we have that you ask anything. According to the word of God, the word of God, God will answer. And if you man know, listen, there is this knowledge and belief. When you don't believe your prayer, it is not God that answers your prayer, or it's not hundred percent God that denies your prayer. You see, when a prayer is not answered, you have serious part, close to seventy percent, where that prayer was not answered. Let me tell you why. Now, when you pray, you say when you pray, you believe that what you are praying for. Are given to you before the answer will come. Are you listening to me? You believe first. You that pray, you believe first. Hallelujah. Hope I'm not speaking German. Hallelujah. It is you that decide whether your prayer will be answered. First, you pray according to the will of God. You're a child of God, you have to with God. You pray according to the will of God. What does it mean? You don't ask God, you don't sit down and ask God. God, God, I want to go and rob that bank. I want to go and steal. If I go and steal, I hope you will leave me. And God, please, 
guide me as I go and stay. That is against the will of God. What is the will of God? Will of God is what is obtainable and what God allows. That is what God takes and absorbs. That is the will of God. Your prayer must be according to the will of God first. Now, you pray with faith. How do you pray with faith? You are asking God now for a job. Now, as you are asking God for a job, you will believe that the same God you are asking for a job has the power to give you the job. And you have to ask. And because you ask, he must do his work and he must give it to you. Because he said, ask, you shall be given. See, you shall find. No, you don't shall be born. Now, belief must be there. The way you don't believe, God will not look at you. She has prayed. She has believed me. Then I have no choice. He will give it to you. But when these things are not there, it's not prayer of faith. Because God only answers prayer of faith. Praise God. So when we are taking seven and a half and making moves, we should be able to understand why most of the mission we are going through are aborted. It's not because God is wicked, it's because we have not met the standard at which God wants. And that's what we're talking about this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Procrastination leads to wasted years, as I've said before. It leads to wasted years. And procrastination of what you do today, you bring it on tomorrow. It has no respect for anybody. I must tell you, procrastination has no respect. If you don't take your time, you know it will come to you irrespective of who you are. It does not respect that. It didn't happen to Jesus. Jesus even suffered procrastination. You want to see that? You want to see it? If you are trying to say, show me. Hallelujah. Now, let me start by, before showing you, let me tell you something. In the book of Luke, chapter 2, Mary, the mother of Jesus, a lot of prophecies were coming concerning Jesus. And there was one word that the word of God kept using when the prophecies were coming. One word, and Mary kept it in her heart. Luke chapter 2, verse 19. Luke chapter 2, verse 51. And we went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these things, all these things in her heart. Praise God. This was the part of Mary. Mary was keeping all the prophecies and promises that were coming about Jesus. Then Jesus Christ was 30 years. And Mary was looking for when Jesus will begin all the prophecies that came to pass in his life. And Jesus was so much interested in carpentry instead of doing what God said he should do. Now, Jesus was procrastinating that it is yet, the time is yet to go, to mature. And one day, there was marriage in Canaan. And the people brought the invitation and they gave it to Mary. And said, Mama, you are invited to this program. And Mary saw the invitation. And Mary told the people that gave her the invitation. He said, My son is inside. Go and give him the gospel. Give him his book. They said, Mama, you can come with the invitation. No, they go and personally give him and tell him that you need him. You need him there. They now went and gave Jesus Christ the invitation and said, You are invited personally. We want to see you sad in, in, in the marriage. Now they went to the marriage. When they go to the marriage, Jesus Christ now went to the disciples. But the disciples were doing nothing that time. You know, they were just going him also looking for him to deploy them and tell them what to do. But he was waiting for the, the time. He was still waiting that it was still years coming. So when they were now doing the party, the wine, the wine finished. And as they were lamenting about the wine that finished, Mary came and said, What's happening? He said, Our wine has finished. Mary, that's no problem. You are going to get a new one. Mary went to Jesus and told Jesus, These people that are being wedding, their wine not finished you. Jesus now looked at him and said, Woman, am I a, am I, am I a wine seller? Why are you disturbing me? My time has not come. Don't disturb me. Why are you holding me? And Mary said, Sorry. Mary went to the disciples and told Peter and John, Your master is calling you.
Go and meet him. Anything he tells you to do, do it. Go and tell him that. What will, I, what will we do? And when the disciple came to Jesus and told Jesus, they said, Sir, your mom said we should come and meet you. What will we do? Jesus said, This woman will give you.
with heavy hands, I struck the alarm. And I was tempted to go back to bed. And I know the implication. If I try it, <laughs> if nobody wakes me, it may be 7 o'clock. So when the alarm rang, I tried to stop it. I stopped it, 4.40. I put it back. I went to the last part. That imaginary master in me told me, don't try it. It is time to be the church. I had to wake up vividly. I went straight to the bedroom. I put on water so that cold water knows how to do the miracle. Praise God. Hallelujah. Why? I have an imaginary master that guides my timing and programs, especially when it concerns God. Since I started church service, I've never been late. Since I met with Christ, I've never been late in church service. I'm still an altar. If I'm late, you know why I'm late. But God never allowed me to be late. Not because of any other thing. Apart from God, I have created an imaginary master that guides me in listen. They don't call me where to come into the church. No. Who am I to come into the church? When you create a military master around you, you will have a standard and the principle that you cannot go below. It is only there that you can be able to achieve your goals. There are challenges. Every time you say no, there are challenges. Now you say this here. I must buy my own land. Now you are made inquiry how much is land? They say it's one million. Where you want to buy it? Now you started saving money. As you are saving money as a woman, you now came to show me. You now saw so strong back that they are selling before 150,000. Somebody is selling that shoe and bag. I say, come and take. It's 50, 50,000, 50, 50,000. Praise God. You know, I say, ah, I break it. Somewhere they say it's 150. Now I see it's 50, 50,000. Now because they have removed money, and because you don't have principle, carrying you that listen, you have made up your mind that your service is going towards getting a property. You will break that service. And before you know it, 20, 23 will go. No land again. That is how people miss out. But when you have this imaginary master, then there is nothing on earth that can come and stop you because you have said again that by December I'm going to get my own land in Vegas. So these are the things that you must have yourself. If you don't, if you are not strong-minded, if you are not highly principled, there is no way that you are able not to have wasted years. It will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you some people who say, listen, it's your, some people are not they are strong, some people are not strong. Nobody is strong, nobody is weak. Hallelujah. Everybody is strong. You know, this man, they call Sebodaya, a the comedian, they call Sebodaya, I want to have a priest, but maybe to use one word. He said, when this, the priest of civil war are blown, men shall behave you like tiger. Praise God. Now, when something happens, you know the strength in you is there. I've told this story several times, I will tell it again. Do you want to hear the story? Yes. Are you ready to hear? Yes, sir. You say, tell me. Yes. Now, there were two drunk, drunks, people that drink so much in a particular community. They can drink. In fact, they were the ones representing their community in drinking. And they are winning, they have won several awards in drinking. Anything in bottle, they finish it. And they will finish it very fast. And they will finish and it will not even intoxicate them. Before it was get there, they must have drank the one that 50 people would drink. So these guys were experts in drinking. And the villagers knew them. And they usually go to drink to the next, at the next village, the, 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 the other village close to them. And there's a way they usually pass to go and drink there, a pathway. And there was a barrier in between the two villages. So one of those days they went to drink. They went to drink, two of them went to drink. And as they went to drink, somebody now died in their village. And there was no place again in the Berakran to bury the person because it was full of the man dog grave in the middle of the road, waiting for the next day to bury the people. And these ones usually drink and come back late in the night to their village. 
So in the night, as one of them was, was coming, it was dark, it was, it was about rain in the night, and it was just whistling like a man, you know, uh, I can make you to believe that you are the, you are the president of the whole world. Why you don't have anything at all? Praise God. It will put you on a pedestal that you are in. fact, when they talk about you, you say, why don't you sit down?
but there shall be testimony of O Lord coming back, standing in a compound to fulfill those mission and vision and aspiration and that those ideas in the name of Jesus. Yeah. For every life that has heard this message now and those that will hear it outside with the blood of Jesus Christ, there shall not be any testimony of wasted years. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, pray. I'm going to want to receive Christ in your life. It's very important to touch it. You are born in Jesus' church. Anywhere you are, Father, your head, you want to receive Jesus in your life. As your personal Lord and Savior, ask Jesus to forgive your sins right now and say, Please forgive my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I'm sorry for my sins, Jesus. Please receive me into your life. Ask Jesus and confess your sins this morning. He's hearing you. Confess your sins this morning. Jesus is hearing you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. What was the Christ today? I'm saying after this, dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me at the cross of Calvary. And on the third day, you rose again, and I've been justified. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me from my sins and Satan to serve the living God. Today, I believe I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, your grace has brought these wrongs. Let's see some of the rest of them in the name of Jesus. That we will come, oh Lord, none of us shall be far wanting, but all shall be shouting to the and the minds in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.